In a small village located deep within the forest of eastern Nigeria, there was a name that sent shivers down the spines of even the bravest. Agbala Oku, one twenty-four year old man, cursed and feared by all. His presence loomed over the village like an unshaken shadow. For generations, he had lived through wars, famines, and the rise and fall of kingdoms. But death never came for him. Eyes, cold and grey, had seen more than the village itself had seen in its existence. Even the king, a man revered for his courage, spoke of Agbalaoku only in whispers. For there was a belief, no, a certainty, that the old man could hear every conversation uttered about him, no matter where it took place. One moonless night, the wind howled through the village. The trees groaned as though burdened by the weight of unspeakable secrets. In his darkened hut, Agbalaoku sat motionless, his skeletal fingers gripping the staff carved from the wood said to be as old as he. Kin was wrinkled beyond recognition, but his mind was sharp sharper than any blade the villagers could wield. No one knew why he lived or what ancient power had kept him from the cold embrace of death. But everyone, including the king, dreaded the day that the old man would decide the village's fate. His wrath was unpredictable and rumors spoke of unspeakable acts performed under the guise of rituals that had kept him alive all these years. The first child who disappeared was a boy named Chie Meli. His mother, striking with grief, wailed through the night, begging the gods for answer. But the village knew, they all knew, he had gone too close to Agbalaoku's dwelling. The boy had disappeared in the thick of night, never to be seen again. You must go to the king, the villagers urged his parents. Only the king can speak to Agbalaoku. But the king had his fears. It had been said that one could not look at Balaoku directly in the eye. His gaze alone could freeze the blood in your veins. The king, afraid of the whispers about the boy's disappearance, hesitated. Yet as the village grew restless, he knew he had no choice. The village square was silent when the king and his guards approached Agbalaoku's hut. It was a journey no one wanted to make. As they neared the edge of the village, where the hut sat like a forgotten tomb, the king noticed the unnatural stillness around it. Not a single bird chirped, nor did the insects dare hum. The thick forest canopy felt like a barrier between their world and Agbalaoku's. Agbalaoku, the king's voice was firm, but there was a tremor in it that betrayed his fear. Moments passed. Then the door to the hut creaked open. Agbalaoku emerged, towering despite his bent frame. His hollow eyes gleamed with something ancient and dark. You summon me, king. His voice was like gravel scrapping against stone, deep and cold. The king, struggling to steady his voice, spoke. A boy, Chiemelie, has disappeared. We ask for your help to find him. Agbalaoku's leaves curled into a grin that chilled the air. The boy has wandered into places he should not have. Do you seek his return or do you seek answers? The king hesitated and at that moment he realized there were things far worse than death. The next day, Chiameli's body was found at the edge of the village, lifeless and drained of color. His skin had turned ashen, and his eyes were wide open, frozen in terror. No one dared say it, but they all knew Agbalaoku had marked the boy as a warning. As the village mourned, the elders gathered in secret, plotting to rid the land of the old man. But how do you kill someone who refuses to die? They spoke of ancient rituals, of long-forgotten gods, of calling on spirits even older than Agbalaoku. But every plan ended in silence, for they knew he would know. He always knows. Weeks turned into months and more children vanished. The fear in the village grew palpable, suffocating. Some families fled, 
while others locked their doors and whispered prayers to gods they weren't sure were listening. The king, once the pillar of strength, now sat in his palace haunted by the sight of the boy's lifeless body. One night, as the village lay in restless sleep, the sky turned crimson. The moon, hidden behind clouds for months, now hung low and blood red. A group of brave warriors led by the king's youngest son, Inkem, had gathered in secret. They believed they had found a way to end Agbalaoku's reign of terror. The warriors crept through the forest, their faces set in grim determination. As they approached the old man's hut, Inkem raised his hands, signaling them to stop. The air was thick with tension. With a deep breath, they stormed the hut. But what they found inside made their blood run cold. Agbalaoku was waiting for them, sitting at the center of the room, his eyes gleaming with malevolent joy. You think you can end me? He whispered, his voice slithering through the room like a snake. I am older than this land, older than your gods, and I will not die. Before the warriors could react, the earth trembled beneath them, and from the ground, dark twisted roots erupted, wrapping around their legs and pulling them down. Agbalaoku stood, his staff glowing with an eerie light. Run! Inkem shouted to the others, but it was too late. The ground swallowed them whole, leaving only Inkem behind, his eyes wide with terror. Agbalaoku approached him slowly, each step echoing through the earth. Tell your father, he is, that death cannot claim what it fears. Inkem stumbled out of the hut his heart pounding in his chest as he ran back to the village. The words echoed in his mind, death cannot claim what it fears. And so, the legend of Agbalaoku lived on, a curse that would haunt the village for generations. Death refused to come for him, but as the years passed, the villagers whispered of a day when something far more terrifying than death would arrive to finally claim him. Until then, Agbalaoku remained a man who refused to die. If you enjoyed this story, please smash the like button. And if you are here to subscribe to this channel, please do so. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you. Until next time, stay safe and bye for now.